originating from the podcast studio inside FAM 360's headquarters in Atlanta, Georgia. This is the Above and Beyond Leadership Podcast. The Above and Beyond Leadership Podcast is designed to encourage, equip, and inspire our audience through a combination of inspirational stories and real-life experiences shared by other successful and skilled leaders in a variety of vocations. We hope that the Above and Beyond Leadership Podcast empowers each one of us to step out, step up, and ultimately thrive as leaders. Now here's our host, Mr. Matt Maloney. Hello, 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 and welcome back to another episode of the Above and Beyond Leadership Podcast. I'm your host, Mr. Matt Maloney. For today's episode on the Above and Beyond Leadership Podcast, we get to turn the dial uh, and tune in for an episode series that we like to call uh, Solo Sessions. On today's solo session, we're going to venture out on a journey together and explore what has arguably become one of the most maybe the most important factor in successful leadership today. It's a character trait that the most successful leaders, particularly in the business uh, community, uh, possess. In fact, it's a character trait so powerful and profound that the overwhelming majority of scholars and experts in the field study of leadership have said this is the true X factor for successful companies or successful organizations who have leaders that possess this quote unquote X factor. To give you a hint, a little hint here, let me name a few highly, highly successful business leaders who possess and emulate this highly effective character trait or leadership character trait. Warren Buffett of Berkshire Hathaway. Uh, People like Truett Cathy, who is succeeded by his son, Dan Cathy, who is now succeeded by his uh, son, Andrew Cathy of Chick-fil-A. And Sam Walton, the founder of Walmart and his leadership teams that have succeeded him over the years all possess this character trait, according to people who work with them. Now, before I introduce this leadership character trait, I thought what I'd do today is really start with a question for our audience. So if I were to ask you, what is the single most important characteristic of the most successful business and community leaders? What would you say? We haven't introduced it yet. So what would you say it is? Is it perhaps great communication, specifically someone who can communicate clearly and articulately? Is it a vision casting or vision creation and casting leader who really sets the vision really, really, really well for his people and for the organization. Perhaps it's drive and determination. Certainly great leaders have internal drive and and are determined people. Is it toughness or what Angela Duckworth proclaimed on one of her TED talks as the most important factor for success, what she calls grit. Perhaps it's toughness. Positive thinking, Maybe it's risk-taking. Certainly great leaders and and great organizations uh, have to be willing to take risks. Uh, There's an old saying that goes, uh, if if you never swing at the plate, you can never hit the ball, right? Perhaps it's decisiveness, making decisive decisions. So what is it? Well, there's no doubt that these are definitely important character traits of great leaders who run great companies. But according to the most in-depth studies of of some of the most successful organizations, The answer actually is, drum roll please, it's humility. That's right, humility, a leader that leads from a position and posture of humility. So let me start by pointing out some research on this. Um, I've talked about some great books that I've read over time in my quest to learn more uh, as a leader, to try to grow as a leader, uh, things that I've given to people on my leadership team, books to read uh, uh, on books that we've read as, as, a, as a group together on our leadership team. And I talked about one specific book, book on a prior podcast uh, that was written by a guy named Jim Collins. And the name of the book is Good to Great. Good to Great is a book that outlines in summary how um, Jim Collins and his team peeled through layers and layers of 1,435 companies, 1,435 companies. They spent uh, an exceptional amount of time peeling back the layers on these companies, really looking for those that made substantial improvements in their performance over a long extended period of time. And they were looking at the leadership teams, the leader at the helm of the organization, their processes, all of these things. And ultimately, they finally 
finally settled on 11 companies that were truly what I call above and beyond all others over sustained durations of period of time. And what they referred to as companies that went from good companies to great companies. Once these leaders that they observed came in to run these companies and change, or in some cases, turn around these companies. Sometimes they were companies that were in a bad position and they certainly turned them around, but they were were able to sustain these organizations over extended periods of time through highs and lows economically uh, in the, in the macro economy um, here in the U S and what Collins and his team discovered was the most influential traits of these 11 great companies challenge conventional notions of corporate success. And at the heart of those rare and truly great companies, uh, they found a, certainly a culture that rigorously found and, and, and uh, promoted disciplined people to think and act in a disciplined manner, without a doubt. But at the helm of those companies was a group of incredible leaders who displayed a powerful mixture of personal humility and indomitable will. Personal humility and indomitable will, which is perhaps a combination of humility and grit, right? Or toughness. So maybe Jim Collins in his quest and looking at this and found that, you know, with the humility factor, and I mentioned Angela Duckworth earlier talking about the grit factor, those two things combined. But in this case, it was, uh, it was pretty incredible how, the, how they found that every, out of all the companies, the 1,435 companies that they looked at, these 11 great companies that their leaders had a strong, excessive sense of personal humility. Uh, in the book, there's a quote that says, uh, the good to great leaders never wanted to become larger than life heroes. They never aspired to be put on a pedestal or become unreachable icons. They were seemingly ordinary people quietly producing extraordinary results. I love that. I love that quote. So, wow. I mean, for me, honestly, this is, I wouldn't say it's counterintuitive, but it certainly is counter to what one might think a great leader of an organization may look like. I think sometimes for me personally, I think about somebody who is an over the top personality, one that can rally the troops and get everybody together and see the vision and, and walk forward with the vision. And, and again, those are important factors. There's no doubt about it, but again, arguably based upon the research and the, how the scholars and, and people who have studied this field of leadership, they have essentially deduced down to the fact that humility is by far the number one factor. So again, let me be clear again, that, that these other character traits are not bad, but arguably elite businesses and uh, those leaders that run those do possess strong humility. So before I get into the why, allow me to share a personal belief of mine. So it's my personal belief that every great leader must encounter struggle in his or her life. They must go through periods and times of darkness. They must go through the valley of the shadow of death and walk through that and learn from that. And I think one reason is, is that we have to gain perspective. Um, and in order to gain perspective, a, a really a holistic perspective on our life, we have to be knocked down and we have to sit and we have to look out and evaluate our own personal desires, our own personal needs, uh, the things that we want to accomplish, perhaps the legacies that we want li- to, to leave behind when we're gone. And I think for I, I, I'm not saying that there aren't good leaders who maybe haven't been through tumultuous personal struggle or situations, but I think the really great, great leaders, I think in my personal opinion, we have to go through some really intense struggle. So let me share with you about a time in my life recently that I've uh, gone through struggle and um, how it gave me perspective. And I won't go through all the details, but it was um, April of, March, April of 2021. So last year, and, um, I had, uh, had been, you know, we, we'd been coming out of the COVID mess that we had been in and I'd not been feeling too well. And, um, there was a couple of significant situations that I think as you know, the proverbial straw that broke the camel's back happened in my life. And I went through this really deep, uh, dark place of depression in my life. And it was, um, it was tough. It was tough. I mean, I was, it was all I could do just to get out of bed every morning. 
it was all I could do to walk into the living room and face whatever was going on for the day, whatever, whatever things that we needed to do uh, in my work, the things that I needed to take care of in my home. And thank God my wife, the rock that she is, she was there for me. And I was able to sit with her in the morning and pray with her. But it literally, this, this period of time in my life literally brought me to my knees. And I distinctly remember one afternoon sitting outside, tears rolling down my face. And I was just looking up at the sky and um, talking to God and asking him why he was bringing me through this particular situation and um, why I was feeling the way I was feeling. And it just came over me like, I mean, it was clear as day. And essentially what he was speaking to me and what he was telling me is first and foremost, he wanted me to quiet myself and release all the things that I was trying to control in my life. And, and the second thing that kind of came with that, or maybe part two of that message was that he wanted me to humble myself before him. And, um, I was leading up to this. I was pressing and toiling with things in our business. Again, we were kind of coming out of, well, I don't know if we were coming out of it, but we were in the, still in the middle of the COVID situation. And I was struggling to figure out what decisions to make in our business. And we saw margins constricting while at the same time we were trying to grow the business. I was looking at bringing on other leaders in our company. And then we were making decisions to let go of other leaders in the business based upon some things that were taking place. And then I had a couple of leaders in the business leave me during that period of time right at that period of time or just before that. And so there was this confluence of all this conflict and turmoil and I was trying to press ahead, right? I was trying to be mentally tough and, and um, you know, rely on, in my life, I rely on God and, and where he's calling me to be at. Uh, but sometimes that's hard to do. And, um, I just broke down and, um, and it was, it was deep and it was dark. I mean, I had to go through some counseling and that season, as I look back on it right now was so sweet. It was so sweet. I was humbled to the core about, and it changed my perspective on so many things, so many things that God wanted to change my perspective on about my family and what I was not doing uh, to fulfill their needs and to lead in their lives and uh, my business and and what I was struggling with there and, and how I needed to humble myself and some of the things that I was attempting to do, but just couldn't quite accomplish. And so that period, that season, thankfully came to an end as all seasons do. And, um, we, we went into a new season of life for me, but as I went through that, it humbled me. It was a humbling experience and coming out of that. I had a different perspective on my business had a different perspective on how I was leading my people in the company. I had a different perspective on my engagement with my wife and my children and, and just the things and, and certainly, you know, priorities and other things in our lives. And so I'm not suggesting that every great leader has to go through something like that. But I do personally believe that every great leader has to have a period in life in which they are just torn down and they go through some intense struggle. It allows them to gain perspective so that they can come back and lead themselves and ultimately lead others with conviction and with confidence, uh, and certainly with humility. So that was a pivotal moment in my life. So let's, let's unpack uh, the why of why humble leaders are so effective. So humility by its very nature ultimately yields an authentic foundation to key relationships, authenticity, right? Humility brings about authenticity, which ultimately draws people in. Think about that. I know my wife and I have talked about that. She even talks about that in my relationship with each other and our children. And, you know, for me to, uh, when I, sometimes when I come into the home to take off my, my business hat and, and, and put on and be authentic with them and, and, and be humble with them. And that draws them in even my, my teenage daughters, not so much maybe my son, but even my teenage daughters drawing them into me and, and showing that humility. Um, a leader with humility often assesses situations based upon value versus wants. 
Let me repeat that. A leader who leads with humility or a humble leader often assesses situations in their organization, certainly in their lives, uh, and, and bases their decision based on things of value versus things of want which I think is, is incredibly important. And a leader who leads with a posture of humility is always willing, always willing to empower others on their teams. This leader is not the leader that is going to be a, a dictator, a leader and who's going to drive and force things to go. This, this, a, a leader who has humility is one as someone who's going to sit back. They're going to ask questions, they're going to probe for answers with their teams and ultimately they're going to empower their people and support their people to go out and execute. It's, it's what I like to call and what we refer to in our organization as, and this is a visual reference, as the upside down triangle. We're leading from the bottom and we're supporting our teams above us, right? We're not leading from the top and uh, telling and demanding what needs to be done. We're leading from the bottom, the upside down triangle, and we're supporting. Sure, we're casting the vision. Sure, we are helping drive the direction of the company, but we're doing it from a posture and a position of humility. Uh, and, we, and again, in our organization, we, we like to use the upside down triangle as the, um, as the visual reference. So who do you know in your life that you consider a great leader? someone that maybe has inspired you to step out, to step up and overcome something that you were perhaps scared to do or concerned to do. Uh, someone who's inspired or motivated you to go, what we like to call on this show, the, to go above and beyond. So now let me ask you this. When you think about that person, if you've got that person or maybe those people in your mind who you think are great leaders, let me ask you this question. Do you find that that person possesses the quality of humility? I know I do. When I think about the people who have most inspired me in my life, I would say nine times out of 10, it's someone who's approached me and who I've been able to follow or be able to be inspired by because of their posture of humility. So let me close with this quote. C.S. Lewis said, Humility isn't thinking less of yourself. Humility is thinking of yourself less. Thanks, guys, for joining us today on another episode of the Above and Beyond Leadership Podcast to all of our subscribers in podcast land. I hope today's episode was both empowering and inspirational. Until the next episode, I pray that our daily journeys are filled with opportunity to lift others up and inspire one another as we aim to go above and beyond. Thanks, guys. Our executive producer and host is Matt Maloney, president and CEO of FAM360. Strategic communication coordinator, Michelle Decato. Production assistance by Tin Dog Studios. Director, John Berland. Creative assistant, Whitney Berland. Theme song, Connecting Dots by Curtis Cole, provided by Artlist. Please subscribe today and don't miss any of our weekly episodes.